Pascal Simon from uh, Paris and Timon here uh, at uh, Alto. Um, so, first of all, we already heard uh, in the previous talk uh, quite quite a lot about the uh, Shiba states and Marana uh, modes and um, what's the usefulness for these modes. So, the long-term goal is to possibly build uh, some kind of uh, uh, topological quantum computer. Um, however, I think it looks to me uh, that uh, this road is kind of uh, paved with uh, lots of uh, unknowns at the moment. And the idea that uh, if, if one needs to take a home message from this talk, if one just leaves now, um, would be that before reaching this kind of topological quantum computer, this exotic kind of uh, uh, quantum processor, um, it might be useful uh, to implement first some kind of conventional qubit that here we will we label the ESR qubit that is formed by, by a dimer, namely two impurities in a, in a conventional superconductor that interact with our, and are manipulated. And the main message of this talk is that uh, such a dimer could host a conventional qubit um, a two-level system that uh, turns out is possible to be manipulated, uh, detected, and even interplayed with uh, topological qubits uh, in such systems. So uh, that's kind of, in, 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 in a nutshell, uh, the present story and, and the following that will uh, uh, detail uh, around this, uh, this idea. So why ESR states? Um, again, as uh, have been discussed in the previous talk, um, these states are emerging. So if, if one inserts in magnetic impurities in a, in a superconductor, they harbor Yushiba uh, Rushnov in gap states, which when uh, uh, combined together, for example, in, in, a, in an array of uh, magnetic impurities, can give rise to uh, end modes, uh, Marana end modes, or at least is, is uh, consistent with the emergence of uh, zero Marana end modes at the end of uh, the chain. And uh, of course, these are kind of the building block of uh, topological uh, processor based on such uh, material. And here, uh, uh, from the same group as the previous uh, speaker, um, where beautifully they can manipulate the length of the chain, so there is really a lot of uh, uh, freedom on how to design and pattern uh, surfaces, superconducting uh, surface which, uh, with such impurities, for example here iron, so can go from uh, 3 to 30 uh, iron uh, atoms and can really make a, a, a pattern of these surfaces and create, uh, for example, uh, quantum processor based on this uh, system. So there is lots of um, exciting, uh, very exciting experimental uh, advances uh, using uh, this idea uh, based on Yushiba Rushinov state. Now, um, I would like just to kind of briefly flash uh, the, the, the building block for everything here. And um, this is basically a magnetic impurity here to be as classical as a delta function inserted in a, in a superconductor uh, that is uh, described by uh, tau, that is the number space. And then one can write down some kind of Green's function and then uh, uh, find uh, the resulting Green's function in the presence of this impurity that is uh, exchange J with the spin S of the classical impurity and the uh, electronic spin sigma. So once one does that, uh, ends up with uh, this in-gap states, the Yushiba Rushinov states, um, that are defined by uh, basically the density of states mu zero and uh, the coupling uh, J dot, uh, J uh, S, or J exchange coupling again, and S is the spin. And of course, this, uh, there are some spinners associated with uh, this uh, Yushiba Rushinov states. These are spin polarized states. And theta here, uh, just for generalization, I just uh, assume that the magnetic impurity uh, here, if I just have to, to, to show here, just uh, it's at some angle theta. So that's uh, the only uh, part here. 
All right, so the goal is kind of clear to utilize this for some, uh, this Yoshiba Vishnu State for something useful. However, to the best of my knowledge, uh, at the moment, um, there are, have been no coherent quantum degrees of freedom identified experimentally yet in this system. So most of the measurements are uh, DIDV measurements, so uh, spectral measurements, but uh, at the moment there are uh, no coherent kind of um, um, uh, features identified. So one would need in principle uh, for new methods to scrutinize this Yoshibarusnov and eventually Marana Fermi's apart from the conductor. So here we, we come and say, okay, um, instead of uh, going right through to, to the topological uh, kind of sector where there are Marana fermions emerging at the end of, of uh, a chain, uh, let us take a more um, uh, simple approach and first identify a conventional kind of qubit built out, out of this uh, single DSR state, which you call the DSR qubit. And the inspiration from that for that came from um, the Andreev qubit that occurs um, in between um, at, when one creates quantum point contacts and superconductors. Uh, there are in gap states building up uh, in this uh, quantum point contact, and there have been beautiful works um, describing that both experimental and theoretical, uh, and, and how to manipulate, uh, for example, these states, coherently manipulate these states by means of uh, phase buffer. So here, delta is the phase buffer. Now, if, of course, the, the ESR state is also like an Andreev state. Uh, however, uh, a single impurity, a single ESR impurity is just one state. So it's not enough for a cube. So, in order to, to, to get to a similar scenario like with the Andreev cubic, we need something beyond that. So, what the next is, is the Shiba diamond. And this is, of course, not science fiction. I mean, it uh, has been um, absolutely demonstrated that dimers can be uh, built and manipulated more or less at will. So, distances between uh, different uh, impurities can be controlled and also. Um, yeah, in, in kind of, uh, that's an experiment from uh, Princeton, if I remember correctly. Now, with uh, this knowledge and, um, uh, and, and, and kind of, uh, we are very happy to find about this, uh, this experiment. Um, we're like, that's our kind of uh, proposal. So the idea is as follows. So we have two magnetic impurities, S1, S2, two classic magnetic impurities that uh, both can be addressed individually um, with uh, STM. So one STM on the left and one on the right. So one is the target qubit left and one is the control qubit right. So the right can manipulate, basically can drive the magnetic impurity, the blue uh, magnetic impurity, and, and the, the second, second one, one can uh, uh, detect the, the, the left yeah. one. Now, how is the uh, qubit manipulation occurring? So again, putting in parallel with um, ideas uh, developed in double dots in conducting physics, uh, there the idea is to um, um, put voltages. So with voltages, here on the right, we have a quantum, double quantum dot, and you can control the, the depth of uh, the confining potential. So by controlling the depth of the confining potential, one can manipulate this uh, kind of uh, semiconducting cube. Here, what we say is by inducing dynamics of the magnetic impurity through the coupling to um, the superconducting electrons, we can shift the well potential up and down, thus bringing the two levels on the left and right in resonance. And that would allow to manipulate this qubit. So it's beyond, so that also uh, brings into uh, discussion the dynamics of the magnetic impurity besides the, 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 the statics. So, to summarize, precession of the classical spin bias. Bias is the double well potential, so it acts like a, like a voltage bias in, in the double quantum dose system. And furthermore, um, on the left side here, uh, frequency shift, uh, back action on the spin, so it's 
by measuring the, the, the resonance frequency of the left spin, uh, and, and more, or more, more specifically, the changes in the frequency shift of the left spin, one can read out the occupation of this in-gap state. In a way, it's kind of similar to quantum demolition readout in cavity QED setup. So if the qubit is up or down, the frequency shift of the left impurity uh, will be different. So that would correspond to readout. Now one can again uh, put down a more formal description. Uh, that's how it looks like in its simple uh, kind of form. Uh, we have a Hamiltonian instead of just one impurity, we have uh, two impurities at a distant r. And the goal is to define from this kind of electronic Hamiltonian to define an effective two-level uh, qubit. Now, of course, there is some uh, machinery, but I I'm skipping uh, this kind of uh, machinery, so I refer to, uh, to the paper, uh, to the archive paper that I mentioned in the first slide for that. And I'm just uh, giving you uh, the resulting in-gap spec. So uh, there are, of course, uh, now because there are two Shiba levels, there are two uh, in-gap states here, um, which in the single particle uh, pictures, so they give rise to four Andreev levels here on, on the left, which we plot also as a function of, of the distance, uh, uh, scaled with, with the coherence length of the superconductor. And here on the right, uh, we show the many body pictures, namely uh, the in gap state defined by the, the, the Shiba diamond um, can be either in the odd parity sector or in the even parity sector. And of course, these two parity sectors in the absence of parity breaking mechanisms, they don't talk to each other, and we can define a qubit stay in the odd parity sector, 0, 1, 1, 0. And theta is the angle of the magnetic impurity with the Zx. So that's um, one of the parameters that uh, we utilize here to show the spectrum. So the qubit Hamiltonian has this, of course, this simple form, sigma Zx in the 0, 1, 1, 0. And we can also find an expression for this qubit energy now, uh, which is uh, co contains two main contribution. One stems from an asymmetry in the coupling strength between the left imp uh, impurity uh, and the condensate and the right impurity and then condensate, uh, here labeled by alpha one and alpha two. And uh, now because the impurity are not by, there is tunneling between the two isolated Shiba states quantified by this TH that uh, uh, here, scales as e to r over the coherence length and also k Fermi r. So what can we learn from, from this? That if delta alpha, if the difference in the coupling strength is much larger than the standarding, the qubit basis is more or less left-right state. So the, the two qubit states are local and most on the left and right. However, in the opposite regime, one gets standard. Shiba molecule that is a symmetric and anti-symmetric superposition uh, of this state. So that's the qubit that we kind of uh, propose. Of course, uh, just saying a two-level system in the qubit is not enough. And there are several um, uh, goals. First, one needs to be to able to read out this qubit. And what we propose here is to utilize the very same, again, impurities that define the qubit to read out also the qubit. So uh, I refer to you for details for, for this uh, recent paper uh, where we describe in details how um, uh, the occupation of a single Shiba impurity translates uh, into changes in the frequency shift of the magnetic impurity itself. So if one has a single magnetic impurity, what we found is that there is a torque from the electronic uh, Shiba state uh, acting back on the classical impurity, and that torque it, uh, contains information about the occupation NS. Well, omega is the precession frequency, and N is the direction uh, of the, of the precessing magnetic, magnetic moment. moment. So, so the, the torque, torque here, here depends if ns is zero or, or one, it changes sign. That's uh, kind of 
uh, imprints into the um, uh, resonance frequency of the impurity cell. And the result of some nice geometrical interpretation for this door, which makes it kind of uh, rather robust because it's uh, uh, kind of has some very phase origin. So in, uh, in, in this work, we, so everything that I said here uh, is uh, represents a, a single impurity. So um, this, this distort has kind of geometrical origin. However, when there are two impurities, uh, there are two types of torques when the one of the impurities says precessive. So there is a static torque that is reminiscent of RKKY kind of interaction. So if the spins are misaligned, uh, there is a torque acting uh, between them. And there is a dynamical torque because the spins uh, start to preset. So there are two, two, two torques acting on them and we have to be careful to, be, to take them both into account. So in order to describe the frequency shifts pertaining to these torques, uh, uh, frequency shifts of the magnetic impurity uh, due to these torques, uh, we put down um, a lambda lichitz gilbert kind of equation, uh, assuming these impurities are classical, which uh, indeed will tell where are the resonances for this M dot. So now the resonances change. And we also plot the static and dynamical torques, so both this kind of RKKY and uh, this uh, geometrical torque. Uh, and we, what we found is that the geometrical torque dominates almost everywhere. So um, we were able to extract an expression here on the right. Uh, it represents the frequency, the resonance frequency of this M dot for the two qubit states. So I can be zero or one. And here on plot B, I show you the frequency shift, resonance frequency shift between the two qubit states. So what we find is that this frequency shift can be in the range of gigahertz uh, even, which means it can, in principle, uh, be resolved uh, in ESR, STM, STM ESR uh, measurements, as has been shown for normal, for impurities deposited on normal surfaces. Furthermore, um, in this region here, the delta omega is rather flat as a function of parameters, which means it's insensitive to factors in the drive. So that's also good. Now, we need to perform a qubit rotation. So we read out, then we can, uh, which means also we initialize the qubit. Next, we need to be able to, to manipulate the qubit on the block sphere. So if the qubit is zero and one, we'd like to be able to uh, put it, for example, in zero plus one. So we again utilize the classical spin dynamics. So uh, in the absence of the dynamics, the qubit is just EQ over two sigma Z. However, if the classical spin now possesses, for example, driven by uh, nearby STM, there are, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, like more qualitatively, there are terms that um, uh, are due to the dynamics. And one is the one that I mentioned that shifts the potential while uh, that basically biases the, the two Shiba states. And there are terms that have to do with phi dot and theta dot, are the angles, the, the angles, uh, spherical angles of the magnetic impurity uh, that now are containing, they are become time dependent and allow for coherent manipulation. So I'm using the very same mechanism um, that defines the Shiba states in the first place. So now we can uh, induce uh, this dynamic and we want to see, okay, how can we manipulate the Shiba state? So what we, we just identify one protocol. So first we need to see, we have some evolution operator pertaining to uh, this uh, dynamic and we propose a pulse set sequence. So first let us start with the two impurities up uh, we perform an adiabatic pulse, so basically we, we switch uh, fast one of the impurities, then uh, the, uh, the impurity is turned into precession for the time one needs to, uh, to, uh, to, to drive the impurity to perform the coherent rotation, then uh, the, the impurity is stopped, it's still in the antiparallel, and then you bring it back to the original position. So at the end of, 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 of the story, the 
uh, we, we did a kind of a, a pulse skin uh, acting on the ESR cube. And they have some time scales, so for, for more data that is for you to, um, to the paper. Also, what we realized is this, uh, doing this, uh, it, it, uh, the rabbit frequency, so the time scale it takes to go, just to, to mention here, to go from, da, from zero to one, it, it's much, much faster, faster in the anti-parallel uh, configuration, configuration than in the parallel configuration. So here we, we also we, we plot how long it takes so the rabbit frequency to do the when the, the, the two spins are anti-parallel uh, as compared to when they are parallel. So it's, it's much better to start with the anti alignment. So that's where the, most of the manipulation uh, seems to be uh, the strong one. And that uh, anti anti alignment has been already confirmed experimentally, at least for some uh, distances between impurities. So here in more details, so this pulse gives rise to coherent oscillation between uh, the zero and one of, uh, of this ESR qubit. And what we find is we find almost perfect uh, Rabi oscillations and uh, that are take place on a time scale uh, of 8.9 nanoseconds, uh, taking uh, values from um, previous experiments from IPM to the normal methods. Um, and um, yeah, some, some parameters for, for, for the um, uh, two Shiba states, like distance between impurities, it's a bit larger than the coherence length, but in a way it doesn't matter too much. Uh, the coherence oscillation yeah, seems to be uh, rather, work rather well. So, the manipulation, the manipulation is possible, possible again, again using the very same mechanism that defines the impurity in the same place, just one is with nitrogen dynamics. Of course, uh, all it comes down to how the coherence processes act in these systems, and not much is known uh, about that. However, we identify several mechanisms, phonons, uh, quasi-particle poisoning, and thermal spin fluctuations, again, of the very same spins that define uh, the two impurities. I'm not going to talk about the first two mechanisms. Um, they, they can be important, at least quasi-particle poisoning could be mitigated out by just uh, uh, somehow making better materials or putting quasi-particle traps uh, to, uh, to, to get rid of the quasi-particle population. Uh, phonons um, can also have some importance, but uh, will not be discussed here. Um, However, it turns out that in the anti-parallel configuration, uh, the main effect stems from fluctuations in the magnetic moment. And what we find is that the coupling to these fluctuation magnetic moments is nothing but TH, the tunnel between the two impurities. So once that is known, one can go ahead and can put down a, a rate equation in order to find the coherence of, of this ESR qubit. And what we find is that the T1, which is the relaxation time of the qubit, is proportional to this GC, that is TH squared, and the noise spectrum of the spin fluctuations that can be that are found to be proportional um, to um, basically the Gilbert damping. So there is some fluctuation dissipation theorem that imposes this kind of uh, behavior for the noise from the magnetic moment. Finally, it all comes down to estimates and uh, values. So taking all this uh, into account um, and um, comparing now for, uh, to, to something that is well known and uh, well established, the Andreev qubit that I mentioned in the beginning, uh, what we found is the following, that in the anti-parallel configuration, five we find minutes. The, qubit, yeah, yeah. the qubit splitting is of the order of 9.5 gigahertz we find, as I mentioned, Rabi time period, so to flip uh, the, the qubit from up or to zero to, to one, uh, 8.5 nanosecond, and from this mechanism, uh, what we find, a relaxation time of the order of seven microseconds, which is much longer than the Rabi uh, time period, so that's not too bad. Here, for the Andreev qubit instead, the qubit splitting is comparable to 8 gigahertz. Rabi time is uh, uh, 20 nanoseconds and relaxation time for uh, microseconds. So these two qubits 
but as expected in a way, because you know, they are both under F qubit, kind of have similar numbers. So uh, there is uh, some hope that uh, this ESR qubit, uh, so uh, defined by two uh, spins in a superconductor, could be of uh, some um, interest in the, in the future. And speaking of this interest, um, while on its own, maybe it's not the best qubit in, in the world, however, it might have lots of usefulness in interfacing it with topological qubits. So it might be used to, to uh, supplement various quantum gates that are not possible with uh, eventually a Majorana-based qubit. So, for example, uh, here we have chains, for example, like in the previous talk, uh, uh, we, we could have chains of magnetic impurities that cause uh, Majorana fermion, and we want to do some manipulation. Now, bringing together or nearby uh, an ESR conventional qubit here defined in this dimer could help uh, construct uh, a universal set of quantum gates just by uh, using uh, their proximity and the fact that there is some exchange interaction uh, building up between uh, the ESR qubit and the topological qubit. <coughs> so it can be basically designed uh, on the surface, so it's kind of natural to just uh, pattern uh, in a way um, the surface, also not just with topological qubits, but with uh, these conventional qubits that could supplement uh, various quantum gates. So um, for example, like in, in, in they discuss in this paper. So that's uh, one of the usefulness of, of this qubit. So in summary, uh, we propose novel ESR qubits encoded in Shiba dimers that, 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 that host uh, uh, two-level systems. For example, in the odd parity sector, readout and control of this qubit can be achieved um, in principle, uh, by just igniting and, and, and harnessing the dynamics of the magnetic impurities that, that couples to, that defines them in the first place. So the coupling is directly strong, so there is no new degree of freedom uh, needed for, for the entire uh, scheme. Um, the coherence seems to be uh, pretty good, um, robust for a wide range of uh, parameters and comparable to uh, the Andrev qubit. And that's, that's kind of the roadmap. Um, um, there are many things left to, to be done. Uh, for example, to include spin orbit interaction, isotropy, scalar scattering. So, for example, scalar scattering we already introduced and doesn't affect much. Um, extending the Shiba chain to Shiba Island, one can manipulate, uh, basically, to manipulate the chain dynamically, so uh, not uh, just uh, a diamond, uh, but uh, maybe. Uh, facilitate with dynamics to have Majorana ferments emerging. Uh, and furthermore, what's even more important is to actually look at the microscopics of this hybrid qubit that is built up of ESR qubit and the Majorana qubit uh, emerging in a topological uh, Shiba chain. So uh, with that, I would like to thank you. And yeah, if you have questions, uh, I would be happy to address them. Thank you. So maybe I ask, uh, can you estimate time of the coherence of this type uh, qubit? Yeah, so that, yeah, so we found that uh, the coherence of the qubit is about 7 So the idea is that define the qubit, it's a finite temperature, so they fluctuate, and that causes the coherence. Yeah. Um, and that, that what, that's what we estimate this T1 to be of the order of 7 microseconds that we find to be much, much longer, or at least an order maybe longer than the rabbit time that we uh, get for the manipulation. Okay, thank you very much.